Hello, and welcome to Tell Me About Your Book. My name is John Christian. Today my guest is self-published author Aaron Spelker. He wrote a book about a pandemic. Now, he came up with the idea for the book in 2014, and he wrote it after he became blind. This is going to be interesting, so stay tuned. Hi, Aaron. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. My pleasure. You have written a very interesting book. You sent me the cover of that. It's called The Bubonic Reorder. Mm -hmm. Fascinating okay. cover. Can you tell me a little bit about that book? Yeah, it's a um, it's a book that uh, I came up with the idea uh, in 2014. And what it's about is about a global pandemic that spreads around the world. So very timely. Um, and it kind of takes place in two parts. So part one is about a family who is um, in the living in you know, the 14th century, and they are kind of there at the outbreak of the bubonic plague, and they are trying to stay ahead of all the death and destruction that's happening around them, and they really don't understand why it's happening, because, you know, back in that time, we didn't know about virus spread and how it happened. So they just know lots of people are dying, and they're just trying to stay ahead of it and you know, find something that's safe. And then the you know, part two of the story is um, about m modern times, uh, where a, a global pandemic is starting to uh, outbreak. And even though we have all this knowledge about pandemics and viral spread, um, the way that it's spreading, where instead of going town to town and village to village like the bubonic plague did, it kind of appears everywhere simultaneously, which makes quarantining impossible. And it's happening and moving so fast that you know, coming up with a vaccine, uh, you know, is is really you know too difficult to happen in the time frame that of how quickly the virus is spreading. Even though in this modern time we have all the knowledge, the virus has kind of thwarted us uh, by moving too quickly for us to deal with it. Wow! And in two thousand fourteen, you came up with the idea of the book. I may as well mention to the audience that you are blind. That's right. And <clears throat> that's that, right. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've exchanged some emails, and um, you let me know that you went blind, not from birth, but some accident happened. Do you mind sharing that story? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I was um, so you know fully sighted up until a little over three years ago, and I was um, on a twenty-year wedding anniversary with my wife down in Cancun, and we went down on the first day to the beach, and a big gust of wind blew all the sand up into my face, and you know got sand all in my eyes. And so for the time I was in Cancun, I didn't think much about it other than my eyes were irritated and bothering me and you know, watering a lot, you know, which I just figured I had you know, some sand or grit in, in my eyes. Um, but by the time I got back to Massachusetts, um, a very um, strong uh, uh, infection had taken place. There was some bacteria, I guess, in that sand uh, that had cut my corneas and introduced this bacteria. And I ended up with a very severe infection that landed me in the intensive care unit in a, a Boston hospital uh, for about three and a half weeks. And when I came out of that hospital, I um, only had light perception. So I can kind of tell where a, you know, a light in the room is or where a window is in a room, but uh, that's about all I can see now. These, these kind of stories always amaze me how easy it is to have something yeah. serious happen yeah. to you. Yeah. You're in a beach, you're enjoying yourself, sand goes yeah. in your eye. I mean, we've all had that happen. Yeah, exactly. It's a uh, one in a million shot, but uh, you know, wow. thing. life happens, I guess. Mm -hmm. So you came up with the idea for the book in 2014, right. but then you wrote it later on. When did you write it? So, uh, so the I had my accident in February of 2019, and um, you know, kind of following the accident, and you know, the two or three months directly following, obviously, uh, I was you know, very devastated. I was very, you know, unmoored of, you know, what my life is now going to be as going from a sighted person to a blind person. And I was kind of you know, thinking about all these things I couldn't do, you know, I'm not going to see this, I'm not going to write this book that I was thinking about, you know, I was always wanting to do that, I'm not going to end up doing that. And about three months after I went blind, I had a person from the Mass Commission for the Blind come to my house and they loaded up my computer with all this, you know, accessibility technology that allows a blind person to utilize a computer. And, um, you know, the guy kind of 
gave me a crash course of, you know, this is how you access your emails and this is how you use Word and this is how you'd surf the internet. And I kind of said, all right, well, you know, I, I now have some basics to uh, do something and I have a lot of free time on my hand. Maybe I can pick up this book and actually start moving it forward. And that'll give me something to do with, you know, this this free time that I have and where all I'm doing right now is uh, spiraling and thinking about being blind and all, what all that means. I kind of need a distraction. So I, I picked up the book idea to you know, really be kind of a distraction for me. Um, from what my current situation was while I was still kind of getting my feet underneath me. Of, you know, what is this new life going to be like? I finished writing in 2019, kind of done my edits right as the pandemic broke. And that's when I turned it over to my editor um, to have them, you know, look over and edit it. Now that person came down with COVID. So then they got you know passed around. I had to wait for another editor at the firm to uh, you know finish up with a project they were working on. And then they picked up my book. So it ended up coming out like, 10 months later than I thought it was going. Like my whole goal was when I started the book in 2019 is I want to have the book done and published in the year 2020, because that's, you know, the time that I'm writing the story, not knowing that COVID would happen at all. But, you know, and I just wanted it to be like when someone picked up the book, they're reading it as if this is stuff that's happening right now. That, um, but it ended up pushing a little bit into uh, 2021 because of those editor delays, uh, you know, getting passed around a little bit with, with COVID. So it took a little bit longer than I thought in editing, just took longer than I thought. Did you receive some comments saying, wow, you're you're writing about a pandemic during a pandemic? There was a, a few things that uh, that they mentioned, which were, I guess, a little frustrating because, you know, I wrote this all before uh, COVID-19 and before anybody knew anything about viruses or viral spread or, you know, what it takes to make a vaccine or things like that. So they uh, chimed in with some you know, comments, uh, that were like, oh, well, you know, what about this with vaccines or what about this with, you know, viral spread, which would have been, you know, six months before no one would have ever known anything about, you know, where I, I was taking a little bit of license because, you know, I didn't know people were going to be so well-versed every day by the news about, you know, that, that subject, if you will. So there was some tweaking I had to do where I had taken a little bit of you know, scientific liberties, if you will, that I had to kind of adjust because, suddenly the world was so knowledgeable about viral right. spread and vaccines and you know, things like that. Yeah. So um, it, that was the only thing that really came out um, in the editing comments, you know, because of COVID-19. I think they were a little bit more uh, insightful or informed about the topic than they would have been um, and probably would have let it go, but uh, you know, they brought it up. But, you know, that's good feedback because people reading it would have, you know, that knowledge that, yeah. uh, you know, now. Were you surprised to find out that in 2020, the world actually did experience a pandemic? And here you are writing a book that you came up the idea for six yeah. years earlier? What a coincidence. Yeah, yeah. I finished the book in uh, December of 2019. So, you know, just a few months before COVID happened. And I will say when, when COVID struck, uh, the timing, you know, oh, this just happened. I just wrote this book. This, this, this happened. Yes, that was surprising. But the actual event... No, because of all the research I've been doing for you know those five or so years beforehand, you know all of these scientists and these white papers I read about pandemic spread and viruses and you know, they they all kind of indicated when it happens, not if, but when the the big virus happens, it's going to probably come out of you know uh, out of Asia. It's going to spread very quickly, simultaneously in multiple hotspots. That's going to make it uh, our traditional tools of quarantine and isolation are going to be completely ineffective because we're not going to be able to quarantine and isolate people fast enough um, before the virus spreads to the next location. And uh, because it's going to happen simultaneously in multiple hotspots, it's going to engulf the world very, very quickly. So like the mm -hmm. bubonic plague took years and years going to spread across the known world. Uh, you know, they kind of explained it would be a matter of weeks uh, with a, a modern type of virus that kind of has that kind of infection rate, uh, it would engulf the world in a, just a matter of weeks. So when it actually happened um, and how it unfolded was not surprising to me at all, because, you know, again, that's what scientists had been indicating would happen. And I was one of those first people, like, you know, as soon as the news started breaking, I was, I was the first person at the supermarket just buying up supplies and uh, you know, toilet paper and all the things that I knew were going to be, you know, it, it, an issue just a few weeks from when everybody else kind of dawned on what this might mean. So I was one of the ahead of the game of stocking up my basement full of supplies. I love your cover. 
Oh, thank you. Did you come up with that idea? I got hooked up with a guy who I um, mentioned him in the dedication, but uh, it was actually a student um, at a college um, uh, that, um, you know, he was in graphic design and uh, I have a friend who's a professor at college and she said, oh, I have a great student. He, you know, he would love to do this book cover for you. So, you know, I sat and talked to him and kind of told him what the book was about and uh, he came up with, uh, with that book design, which, again, I've never actually seen. I've had people tell me, well, you know, what what it looks like and that it looks good. But uh, I had to put a lot of faith in my friend who said he would be great and and, and in him, uh, hoping that he would do a great job. But everyone said he did. So very pleased. Super. Now, before this book, did you write any kind of fictions, short stories, anything like that? No, the last time I wrote anything that was fiction based was probably high school. Okay. I have written about different, you know, retirement and investment planning um, concepts and, you know, had those you know, printed in newspapers and, you know, different, you know, investment, you know, periodicals, if you will. But um, that's a little bit different. That's, you know, it's more factual based. It's more analytical. It's not, you know, trying to write a conversation between two characters. So it was, it was very different to try to write, uh, you know, a fiction book. Um you know, when I came up with the, the idea in 2014, I happened to read uh, two articles, um, and one of them was about modern pandemic plagues, uh, you know, and how they would spread. It was kind of, you know, as I was describing to you before, that they would, you know, spread very quickly, you know, spread in multiple locations simultaneously. So that was one of the articles. The other one was around the bubonic plague, and it was talking how... Um, kind of the genetic mutations that happen from the bubonic plague have actually protect, protected certain segments of future populations from other viruses. And I thought, you know, those two things, kind of a, a story that would talk about the bubonic plague, but then those events would have ramifications, you know, 700 years later um, would be kind of an interesting story to tell. And it, it all kind of came to me at once and you know, very much the, the story I wrote you know, probably 80% of it is, you know, as I thought of it back in 2014 um, and, you know, the scenes and the characters and how they would interact. Um, and then probably 20% of it kind of, you know, got altered as I wrote it and, and you know, thought of other scenes or took a character in a slightly different direction. But it's pretty much as I imagined it um, right from the beginning back in 2014. Mm -hmm. Hearing you describe your book, uh... I kind of feel a little bit that way myself. I wrote uh, nonfiction uh, before I decided to write fiction. And then I found out that my fiction is actually based on non-fictional concepts. And I just made characters to act out what I wanted to say had I written a nonfiction book about the subject that I wrote about, but I decided to do it in fiction. Sounds to me that you were very interested in pandemics and the plagues, and you were very analytical about it. And then you turned it into a fiction to tell your story about what you would otherwise write nonfiction. Am I, am I making sense? Yeah, no, you're, you're really close. I mean, one of my favorite genres is like post-apocalyptic stories. So I, you know, I love the, the lead up to a collapse and then you know what happens in after a collapse. So that's kind of the favorite things that I, I like. But yeah, I, th I think it's almost a little bit easier in some way to write it, you know, I'm writing in a world I know, you know, there's some people who I, you know, I really am impressed by them who, you know, make up entire worlds with their, you know, their own mechanics and own systems. And, and that seems so hard to make that all kind of connect. I'm kind of riffing on, you know, something that is already solidified in the world that we know as it is, you know, so these are real events that happen. I write, you know, things that happen during the time of the bubonic plague. Um, I write about those, as you said, you know, the historical events that happen, but I kind of put, my own spin on them or put my characters, you know, facing those situations, you know, and what was their little role in this bigger actual historical event that happened. Um, so yeah, it, it was, uh, for me, I found that a little bit easier, I think. And as you said, in my kind of nonfiction analytical mind to be able to write uh, in a grounded way. And it sounds like the pandemic in your book was much worse than COVID-19. Part two of the story happens to be a SARS pandemic. So it's very similar to COVID. And again, that's from, you know, doing all the research. They said, you know, the most likely virus that is going to have such a high infection rate and not burn itself out because, you know, it, it has kind of the perfect blend of infection versus deadliness, right? If you have a virus that's too deadly, it'll burn itself out quickly. If you have it really infectious, but not too deadly, then just everyone gets it and it's not a big deal. Uh, 
they say SARS is the one that is kind of the perfect balance between infection and killing people. Mm -hmm. So they always kind of, you know, in the research I read, they said it's probably going to be some variant of SARS that is going to be the big one. So that's what I wrote about. Again, not, you know, not that I came up with it on my own, but just sure. from what other scientists were saying and, and stuff I read, that's why I picked um, the, you know, the SARS as, as the virus. So um, it is worse. Um, there is more death. Um, it happens more quickly in my story than it and maybe it happens in um, real life in the COVID-19, but it, uh, yeah, it is more deathly, but it's, it's not, uh, you know, we don't lose 90% of the population. It's just, you know, I think in my book, something like in the U S 5 million people die or 6 million people die. Uh, I think I referenced in the book uh, in the United States. So it's, you know, maybe five times worse than what COVID globally um, I see. in my, in my story. So what uh, what have you done uh, to promote your book? Have you done any book fairs, any readings or anything like that? Yeah, um, so I've been, you know, across uh, radio, TV, podcasts, um, I, the print interviews. Um, I've had um, a, a person who's done a, uh, a, a reading, uh, like a live reading of it, uh, uh, you know, every Sunday for, you know, for, for, it was like, six or seven weeks uh, every Sunday he, he read it until it was done to his audience um, and um, you know my own social media on you know Facebook and Twitter and things like that um, I donated the book uh, so you know I'm a blind individual there's a thing called Bookshare which is a service that um, provides books to those who are um, have print disabilities whether that's blind or dyslexic or you know some other mobility issue that might prevent them from uh, accessing a book, um, uh, I donated it to Bookshare to put it in formats uh, for those various uh, disabled people so that they could consume it. And I, that's just for free. So if you're a blind person and you have a Bookshare account, for example, you could just download my book for free. And that's just kind of a you know, nod and a give back to the blind community. What are sales like for you? They're much better than I thought they would be. I just kind of figured it, you know, friends and family would buy it, but it has gone well beyond friends and family having purchased the book. So I'm, you know, pretty, you know, pleased with that. Um, you know, one time uh, it was the, uh, I think, ranked 37th on the uh, list of medical thrillers. Uh, it's dropped off since then, but uh, at one time it, it, it hit as high as number 37 on medical thrillers on, uh, you know, whatever that ranking is of books. Uh, it was on Amazon, I think is where I saw it. Um, so yeah, I, it, I'm, I'm kind of pleased that it's made an audience, you know, hopefully through these things like podcasts and radio and TV shows, other people have had a chance to read it and, and, uh, and have purchased the book. It has a you know, pretty high rating on uh, Amazon at like a 4.8 out of five. So, you know, pleased that people seem to uh, enjoy it. Um, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, people who do read it kind of are aware that I wrote it before COVID. Like, I don't want people to just think I like watch COVID and just wrote a book <laughs> about COVID. Yeah. And just, you know. I have one last question. How long is your book? It's like 436 pages. Uh, it's like 130,000 words. Okay. But, uh, right. So pretty, pretty substantial. Um, you can, you know, it, it's available on uh, Amazon and uh, Barnes and Noble. Uh, you can get a, a paper, paperback mm -hmm. copy if you want it, or you know, you can do it on Kindle. Um, and I think it's also on like Target and Wal Walmart and some other places too. But the, oh. the primary places uh, oh. that I've seen people buying it is on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Uh, All right. Like I said, both ebook and uh, and uh, paperback. Paper and then uh, I have a Facebook uh, page, uh, you know, if you want uh, any news uh, about the book. Uh, so it's just the Bubonic Reorder Facebook page. Uh, so you can also go there and, and check out any updates or news about the book. All right. I'll do that for sure. And I hope everybody else watching the show will do the same thing. Yes, please do. It's been a pleasure speaking with you, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. And that is our show for today. If you like what I do here on Tell Me About Your Book, then please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell for future notifications. And if you are a self-published author, I would really like to speak with you. Until such time, keep on writing and be kind to one another.